Hey everybody, um, I'm back, uh, Lana Elko, with my weekly videos, live videos, Intimacy with the World. And if you noticed, I've been away for almost a month and I didn't show up uh, much on the social media in general. and. The reason is that I was dealing with lots of, lots of grief, lots of processing because of the loss of my dear friend. So today I feel called to show up finally and um, share my lessons, share what I learned from this um, intense situation. Hey Ivy, <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, and hoping that it can be helpful for other people um, hoping that it can be helpful for both thank you for your hearts uh, hoping that it can be helpful for both uh, for people who are going through extreme emotional pain who are going through life crisis on all varieties it doesn't matter uh, why but you know if you go through these kind of energies and also for people who are around this person, you know, the person who is going through life crisis, the person who is uh, uh, experiencing lots of emotional pain and, you know, close to suicidal states. This is a very deep and not easy topic and I know it's not, maybe not everybody will be called to watch this, but I'm sure you know, the people who need this, uh, it can be really helpful because the way I want to address this issue, the one I want to look at this, it's not um, mainstream or traditional. I want to go deeper, deeper with this and I will explain what exactly I mean. So you probably noticed there is also some um, situations, uh, certain energies are in the collective field that two um, well-known celebrities, you know, committed suicide recently and I feel, you know, it is good time to look at these uh, situations. It's a good time to look deeper and find deeper understanding, not just like go into judgment or go into, you know, mainstream explanation or surface explanation why you know this happens but go deeper and look deeper and understand where it comes from because it doesn't have just one layer it's like an iceberg i see these situations like an iceberg and we only see the top we only see the surface of the pain the rest is hidden the rest is not addressed the rest is not being understood right and until we really look deeper until we go there and um, understand this on the energetic level we can't really change much because this will keep happening and it's also a huge collective problem as well not just personal so from my perspective many times people who go to extreme emotional pain and you know close to suicides they are actually brilliant beautiful gifted deep people who um, arrive to this place uh, where they don't feel understood, they don't feel they belong, they don't they lose motivation to participate in superficial, you know, agenda and routine of everyday life, who feel um, they can't relate to this anymore, they don't find meaning, and that can be also amplified by certain personal problems and also some. Uh, experiences on the soul level that this is where I want to go today and um, so looking at my own story is that uh, like doing what I do and Remembering that I went through a very intense psycho-spiritual crisis myself and 
experiencing the spiritual emergency the something the term that I will explain what it means later on um, about like two weeks prior to what happened to my friend dad uh, I started to see this number 9-11 9-11 and I even uh, made this um, post on my Facebook feed my personal feed uh, that this is what happened was happening to me and I looked it up I googled it and I saw okay it's a karmic and spiritual number that shows that you're moving to the next level of consciousness that you're finding your soul purpose and being of service uh, to the planet and the others and like I was like well I'm kind of doing this for a while already and I kind of moved in the, to, to this direct towards this direction um, a while ago but somewhere deep inside of me like what does it mean for me right I was asking myself and my guts were telling me like spiritual emergency spiritual emergency uh, and that brought up certain alert inside of me right and then you know I was trying to help my friend to to go through this crisis and I was like okay I, I see what it means I need to show up I need to hi Lena welcome uh, and for me personally it was the emergency number it's like not a coincidence and uh, the way I saw it is a spiritual emergency and now let's go uh, to this place and I will explain what it means um, spiritual emergency was as a term of transpersonal psychology so it is I believe transpersonal psychology is the edge of the modern modern psychology is the top uh, because it, it integrates our spirituality so it doesn't look at the human being as just you know flesh and bones and like mechanical beings or you know only driven by their sexuality you know like <laughs> it's it's uh, integrates the spirituality and our soul that we all have soul right so the, it was offered by Stanislav and Christina Grof hi Yulia <laughs> Uh, it was offered by Stanislav and Christina Groff um, and they are founders of transpersonal psychology uh, and I even found let me see how the Wikipedia interprets it it's a spiritual crisis a spiritual emergency is a form of identity crisis where an individual uh, oops, I got some messages there. Where individual experiences uh, drastic changes to their meaning system, and typically because of a spontaneous spiritual experience. So it's not just something happens on the level of human personality and only like human identity, but it also goes deeper and has some spiritual roots and are connected with who we are and our soul right so that that came up for me during these times and i've been seeing this number this how i interpreted it and uh, remembering my own journey there i actually went through the whole training uh, growth transpersonal training became holotropic breathwork facilitator and it started with my own psycho spiritual crisis hi jamie <laughs> It started with my own like a spiritual crisis um, about seven years ago when I went through this huge turbulent, energetically turbulent, turbulent experience that I couldn't even explain. So I had so many energies go through my body and, and you know, I this is beyond um, any kind of personal experience because I... I was doing well financially I was you know I had success with my business I had you know friends and I had lots of fun it was just happening uh, beyond our understanding uh, on a deeper level and at the time I, I couldn't understand what it is I just felt all these energies go through me I felt disconnected from you know social uh, programming about how you live your life and succeed with this succeed with that achieve this achieve that it's like I, I couldn't relate to that anymore and my soul in this physical body was searching for a deeper meaning you know what 
what is it all about you know while experiencing this crazy energy is growing going through my body that was super overwhelming and i couldn't explain it intellectually um no way at the time so that this is how i found holotropic breathwork and stan groff's work hi Xana. <laughs> um and this is how i started my my own journey right um this you know psycho spiritual transformation so this is what i mean by spiritual emergency and i know my friend david um who took his life recently he went through his own spiritual emergency a few years ago where it was a spontaneous awakening and we have to understand that awakening the way we usually interpret it is not the right way to interpret it's not just sitting in a lotus position and feeling blessed and connected to divine this is both you see the beauty of the divine beauty of life and you also see the ugly side and ugly energies and controlling um painful energies as well plus when you go through real like this is my uh personal perception and belief when you really go through true awakening you start to connect with the collective as well eh? and knowing that you know we are in this physical body we also we are also you know chose to be part of the humanity and we can't really separate ourselves from the collective because we are part of it so what happens what, what happened to me and i know that happened to david as well because we were really close friends oh hi you <laughs> it's an important thing hmm thank you so much yeah i really appreciate it. i still feel connected with all of you who i met through holotropic breathwork and um sometimes these kind of situations kind of bring us back together so i'm really happy to reconnect with many of you uh so so i know david also went through this kind of awakening and um going through this phase of the opening this is what spiritual emergency is about but that is not the end of the story this is doesn't mean we go on the other side and we start to live in bliss so what happens when you have this opening your veil becomes so thin between like material and spiritual between personal and transpersonal between collective um and your individual you know journey that you start to feel collective pain on almost like on an individual level you start to uh, your empathy level goes up thank you so much for your hearts your empathy levels a uh, level is going up to the limits so it's almost like every day you know or like it, it goes through phases it goes through phases and you start to receive downloads you start to feel things you start to you know your psyche activates and you start to see what you haven't seen before uh, something opens up and you don't have your old defense mechanism um, the system of your defense um mechanisms uh, inside of your psyche so you're more also more vulnerable you're also more exposed and you're more fragile this way because you know now you're caring so much more than your own individual journey and like now you are so connected that you know things can affect you so you do need to create a new way of building your own boundaries taking care of yourself connecting with people you know and also building up the idea of how you want to live your life and what you're gonna do with all these things and sometimes you feel you know i'd better be in ignorance i'd better be the way i used to be you know like just having fun and enjoy life and you know being successful and blah 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 like this is what my, my journey was i had really good life and after this it's like a curse and a bliss at the same time and trying to understand so what can i do with this what is that Mm, you know how can i integrate it and be of service to the planet and um, ourselves as well um i personally started to feel the like the skin of the planet like everything is being done to the planet as this alive conscious um con conscious energy like i feel it's like 
almost hurts my soul and my own body like if people don't recycle i feel i feel pain <laughs> and this is this is a crazy thing to, to experience so to understand that many gifted beautiful you know people who seem to be strong and who seem to be you know like doing well and suddenly they kill themselves we have to understand there are deeper things going on there is only the surface we can see and only the surface we can explain with our mainstream tools hi david <laughs> nice to see you so this is what i was going to talk about and because the rest of it is already like you can google and you can find you know like what mainstream psychology is offering in this situation but i, I invite you to go deeper with that and look deeper so another side of this challenge is not being able to find the right support system and you feel when you go through this spiritual emergency and when you are awakening to all the energies and being connected with collective and processing the collective it's like taking somebody's pain and processing it inside and releasing it on the other side you know transforming it this is extremely intense process and sometimes it's really hard on our body and our psyche so it makes us to become very edgy we, we walk on the edge and the lack of support system is uh, it's crazy you know there, there's mainstream culture doesn't offer any containers any tools that can be helpful in this situation because it's not even addressed or seen right so when you go through that and somebody offers you you know like kind of uh, more on the surface support and I know people are very genuine and know people want to help and want support and they they come from the true place but if they don't know what's going on deeper like there is no way they can help anyhow or they can support support people in spiritual emergency anyhow now like there was like probably in 80s i don't remember remind me guys who know stands and christina's journey stan and christina journey uh, 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 grove created actually a foundation for people who are going through spiritual emergency and they saved i believe they saved many lives because what happens with people who are going through this in mainstream culture you can go to the therapist maybe once a week right it's one hour of your life while it's happening 24 hours for you right or you can go to psychiatric clinic where they may be uh, you know um before stan developed this term it was like psychosis it's psychosis let's medicate it let's put a stigma on those people that they're crazy and and that's it you know <laughs> so that that's just so crude this is just so you know <laughs> primitive so stan and christina grove created that foundation and many people just stayed there with uh, with them and uh, all the volunteers who wanted to participate in this project uh, like 24 hours and some people stayed two weeks so four weeks whatever they needed to and uh, what they did they just held, held space for them they didn't do much they just were there 100 percent present uh knowing that you know they have to go through this whole process they gave them love they gave them support they you know met their basic needs and they just holding them in the safe container without judgment without um you know trying to fix something or um put a stigma that something is wrong with them right that they're crazy and then many times after this processing time people come come back to life and they activate their spiritual gifts and they become more powerful in terms of like their life purpose many times these people have something big to offer to humanity and uh, contribute in evolution of human consciousness so there were people who had some psychic abilities people who could you know they wrote book they become became you know powerful healers who can support others so and imagine if they wouldn't receive that help what would happen to them they many of them maybe would kill themselves maybe uh, many of them will go into drugs alcohol whatever destructive journey uh, people are desperately trying to find to just release this pain right plus understanding where it comes from understanding that it's not wrong understanding that 
it is actually a powerful process that brings us to a new level, new level of consciousness. Whew. I'm, I'm very passionate about it. And so, uh, however, um, you know, Stan and Christina created this foundation. It didn't last. It, it lasted for a few years, and then they ran out of funds. And now we're still in the same place as before. We don't have the right containers to process extreme emotional pain, spiritual emergency, uh, suicidal states, especially it's, if it's also connected with spiritual emergency, with personal problems. Uh, when, of course, it's all interconnected, like spiritual emergency plus personal problems that a person can have in their life. And of course, their personal problems on human level also get activated and amplified. So they are arriving to the place of no exit. Like there is no way to fix it. There is no way, there is nowhere to go. And the relatives, their family and their friends, even if they love these people, you know, of course they do, but they don't have tools. They don't have understanding and they feel helpless and they can't do anything. Just watching people uh, collapsing and, you know, um, destroying themselves basically so we still I have to admit that there are no be beautiful tools there are no appropriate tools even basic tools to process to help people to process this and go through this and receive real support not superficial support so today uh, based on my experience based on my lessons but based on my own journey and the journey of my friend David Potvin uh, that I could relate so much on many levels, um, I wanted to offer some um, ideas. I wanted to share some lessons of how we can help better, how we can um, give better support to uh, people that we love and who go through this um, uh, situations who go through this uh, emotional pain, uh, spiritual emergency, who feel suicidal, you know, who feel withdrawing, who lose meaning, right? And it's not in easy, it's not black and white, and there are different reasons that people arrive to this place, but I want to focus on those ones who have this, um, you know, spiritual emergency uh, process going on. And believe me, many of people who go through the suicide who consider suicide and who want to leave, they do have this. They they feel deeper than we can see. And of course it can be it can be also helpful for those ones if you ever feel anything like that, if you are even close to this, it can be helpful to to at least have more understanding, to at least know there is something is going on in the planet and there are people who you know doing their best dedicating their lives to to change something to create the right place the right container for for healing and transitioning right to go through this you know, phase when you need to transition to different level and and not not just leave this body right so here we are i made some notes about it so I don't forget because it took me a long time just to sit and journal and contemplate and process. Uh, so what can we do on the individual level before we can create any kind of a bigger collective container to, to offer support uh, for these people? What we can do on the individual level to support people who go through spiritual emergency? Well, beforehand, we need to connect, connect and try to understand on a deeper level. So it's not, it's not just about, oh, you, because you had a childhood trauma, you, you feel this way, or because you have relationship issues, or because this or that, or you're going through depression. So there are some syndromes. So we're not, we, we can't just look in the syndromes, right? Or the person loses meaning of their life. Well, it's a syndrome, like it's a result of something deeper. So if we just at least create an intention to connect with them, to be 100% present and try to understand in a bit of, um, 
uh, on their deeper level and just stay there with them this is already a huge step forward it's even intention to do so it's a it's a big deal and be there and see them as a soul this is what i am crucial i believe because if you know I, like how do you feel if somebody comes to to you and try to create some kind of diagnose do some diagnostics on you or what's wrong with you you know looking at you that some kind of dysfunctional element in the society that needs to be fixed you don't feel good you don't open up you don't you know feel like that's what you need right you you do the opposite you want to hide you want to avoid you want to leave right so it's not about fixing anybody it's not about helping for to make as soon as possible so they become more uh, functional and just continue their routine no they don't want that that will create more distance so the only way to help is to see that person as a soul is a soul who is struggling in this human body there's just a spiritual uh, challenge that they're going through and they're trying to connect the human experience with their soul experience and they're, they're they in crisis they're trying to find the meaning so their soul needs are being mad and satisfied and probably they in pain craving the soul connection with others and not being able to find it anywhere because everybody is so busy with their routine with their success with the making money with uh, succeeding with their career businesses everybody is uh, like consuming making plans like doing some kind of agenda no no time for this and that and they don't want to participate in this anymore they don't find beauty they don't find meaning in this and they will not be connected to you if you come from that place so it is a soul connection that they crave and they almost never find in these places so the second one is if you can spend as much time as possible with them while being that present not on the superficial because as i said they feel in these states the feelings and um like the the perception sharpens so much the veil becomes really thin if somebody considers to commit suicide their veil is very thin you know they can sense the energy anything that is fake inauthentic superficial anything that comes from pleasing trying to fix you know like trying to help from the place of your ego oh i need to help you know like no they don't want that so if you can spend as much time as possible with them while being real while being in your own connection with your own soul this is the only way they can really connect with you and appreciate and sometimes they do need a lot a lot of time um, sometimes it's like 24 hours and most of us we you know our body collapses we can't even offer this kind of support that's why i think that idea was brilliant with them that project of Stan and Christina because people could take turns and those people were dedicated to this work on the soul level right so but spending as much time as possible quality time soul time that can can help another one is not to not to rush them not to try uh to cheer them up like they would ha hate that like just to cheer them up so they come on you know you can be you can go through this you, you be strong like they hate the thing they don't want to be strong the re the reason <laughs> they maybe are strong people but they lose the meaning why they need to be strong it's like okay i'm a strong but what's the point of being strong right so the normal tools western you know mainstream tools don't work so you don't need even you don't even need to try because uh, if you do that then they will feel it and then they will withdraw another thing um if you feel like many people actually feel really awkward and feel they feel triggered themselves they, they don't know how to deal that they, they can't connect with that deep space inside of themselves to be present for somebody who is like in suicidal state it's better than not even try maybe there can be another person that you know 
who can connect with that person and asking for support because they will feel, as I said, they're very sensitive to any kind of inauthentic energies. <laughs> Привет, um, and they will uh, they will reject you. They will not uh, allow you to connect with them from that place. So if you can't hold that deep space, then maybe it's better to find somebody else who can uh, be there for them. Because that can be even more da damaging for them. Uh, as I said also, the, the best is not never to judge and never to say like something wrong with them, right? Because this is the most painful thing that this person can hear. They understand that this is not, you know, healthy place to be, but they are in an exit situation. You can't just pull them out with all this um, and the judgments, right? If you are able to drop your daily routine, if some, if it's, if this is something that really, really close to you, right? If it's somebody that you love, aren't they? Is their life worth to drop the daily routine? Maybe to take a vacation, you know, take vacation or like, uh, you know, not, not to, to go to your work, whatever you do and to give them your time unconditionally, just being present with them. Like pres there is a truth in presence. Truth is not something about like is right or wrong. Truth is in present, absolute present and connection is the truth. And this is the, the only way and also love, right? Presence and love is the truth. And if you're able to be there in this level, that can shift something, that can create a change. Uh, and they will really appreciate if you, <laughs> if you genuinely drop your routine, not thinking, oh, I have to run. And I know many people can't, do that because of the, how tight they are um, in their schedule, you know, there are maybe, you know, some essential things depend on them. But I do, I do believe it's all here because I don't believe we are in survival mode as a collective, you know, species anymore. I don't think a week of your life can ruin your life completely, but it can save somebody else's life. Another thing that I found out is extremely helpful is to find a place to do your own inner work while you are there, there with this person who is going through such a hard time because you can't avoid your own inner work. You can't just stay you know, detached. You can't stay uh, not triggered. You can't stay not involved. It, it requires certain level of compassion, right? That you compassion in in Russian compassion uh, called sastradanya it means co-suffering you know you have to feel them and they don't feel good you know don't expect to feel good when you're doing this it's about surrendering to those states and willing to to share their suffering this is like it's a hard work only people who have high integrity only people who have done some work on themselves who are ready to you know, open up to this level, uh, uh, capable to to show up and stay in those places and give support. So try not to feel guilty if you can't. This is what my point is. It's like if you can't, if you, it's too much for you, if you're going to collapse, that's not going to help anybody. So knowing your boundaries, because otherwise if you overstretch beyond your boundaries um, of what you can do, uh, your psyche will shut up and you won't be able to be present anymore. So it's better to say, you know, I need a break. It's better to ask uh, another person for support, you know, do what you can and take a break and take care of yourself. Because if you shut up, if you, uh, you know, disintegrate while being with this person, that's not going to serve uh, them or you anyhow. So knowing your boundaries. <clears throat> yes, and one more thing that when 
when we feel guilty about something we go to the pleasing mode like how can we please this person and it's it's not like something like it's not like we don't need to be ashamed of that but that happens all the time and now the energy gets distorted so it means we are not available to go to this deep level where that person is and so instead of going into this pleasing mode it's better to say okay i you know i need a break i need to step uh, back and take care of myself because if they sense the pleasing energy they will also reject you and they will uh, disconnect and go into even more pain because pleasing mode is the most disgusting mode for the person who is so sensitive and who has so much pain because it's not authentic being like when we're trying to please somebody we're not authentic uh, and the final thing that I see in the future and hoping like at this point probably hoping that at some point we, cre we can create conscious community of uh, highly conscious people people with high integrity you know pure intention people who want to open up to deeper level of understanding love unconditional love you know with no judgment and to show up from that place and in this in the, uh, from this place many times we need to sacrifice our ideas of how we want to live our life only good only fun only like, uh, having this commercial interest and like time is money that is not acceptable in those places that's not going to help so we do need to create a different container and it needs to be collective because if just one person we just burn out we burn out and we feel then we feel resentment and and pain ourselves because one person is not enough and I see it as a conscious community where this when a person goes, uh, somebody is going through a spiritual emergency, who is in suicidal states, somebody who is losing meaning, a life crisis, whatever happens, that they can be held by this community and they can take turns to take care of this person no matter what. Um, and then sustain this connection consistently not just like randomly not just for this situation when it's like over the top but consistently living this way this is the only way to to transform anything and change whatever is going on in society if we don't create this community if we don't create this support if we don't create this container based on love like real love you know beyond time beyond space beyond money uh, soul connection remembering that we are souls in these bodies remembering remembering our connection on the soul level like we many times remember each other is from like past lives whatever you believe uh, soul life energetic you know uh, and uh, and showing up this way so it's, it's it's the change it's transformation of the lifestyle stepping out of this mainstream system that is so harmful for our souls because the connection is very superficial we're dying inside i've met so many people who say they're dead inside and nobody can connect with them because everybody's in anxiety and worry how to succeed how to make more money how to be this or that how 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 but then if we're dead inside what's the point of creating all this uh, material you know wealth and material you know success like it's endless you can see it already even if you've never been in the place where you have enough money not to worry about money you can already see that if celebrities you know commit suicide that means that that is not an answer the answer is in a true soul connection the answer is in non-judgmental unconditional love this capacity it's the capacity to love on that level it's not just talking about it it's showing up on that level and understanding that everything has two sides beautiful and ugly and understanding that when you see the ugliness and the you know distortion and deception in the collective it's not easy to do it like to be like a healer to be somebody who can see through the veil when the veil to somebody who walks in two worlds at the same time 
you know, like like shamans did. Like in the modern world, it's uh, almost unbearable to live normal life and process all this stuff. It is really, really hard. And finding that understanding and creating this loving community is the only answer in the big way that I can see personally that can help us to to move forward and evolve and be happier and create a better society, you know, and to see that these um, situations uh, will happen less and less and less, you know, when people take their lives. So this is what I wanted to share with you. And I really appreciate everybody who showed up. It's, it's an honor for me to be here and share these deep lessons and to be vulnerable and to be passionate about it. Like you can feel that, that I'm passionate about it. Thank you so much, Lil. And I do hope that it will help somebody, you know, even if it's like one word. Sometimes somebody says one word and it's just something clicks inside and something shifts inside and we can do something. Maybe we, ref we can refocus our energy, shita energy. So just hoping at this point that it will find um, the right ears and it will find the right um, role in the world, you know, like the snowball effect or something and help somebody and, and in real, on the real level, you know. Hi, Koi. So thank you everybody who watched it. If you didn't watch from the beginning, you can always watch and replay and you're welcome to ask questions. If you do have questions, I would be more than happy to connect with you, you know, and you know, answer your questions because if you're dealing with something like that, it's not easy, you know, and you know, I want to show up. That's kind of, that's my, that's my sole purpose as well. And I understand that <laughs> the thing is like when you go through all of this yourself and then with somebody that you care and love, then you can relate and you can go there and you can offer real support. It's not from books. It's not from speculation. It, it's a true thing. It's the energy you just go. So I wish you a great weekend and let's connect soon. Don't be afraid to reach out personally if you need to. And I will talk to you soon. I'll stay in touch. I'll stay on the path. And sending you a lot of love. Bye.